Now we're going to go ahead and implement an auto save feature in HTMX. So in other words, if a user types something here, I want it to automatically save and so they don't have to press the save button. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and jump into forms.html and we're going to change the trigger. So hx trigger, we're going to change it to simply change. That's it. And we can also delay this by using a delay command of let's say 500 milliseconds. So that means that after it's been changed about half a second, it's going to then run the trigger, which sends a post request to this URL or the same URL this page is on. So if I come in here now and I change it, it should actually do that. Actually, we might need to refresh the page. So let's go ahead and change it now. Click to a new area and notice it says data saved. Now, if I actually click save now, what you might notice is the page is actually being refreshed. It's even more obvious if we preserve the log, I can hit save. And if I hit it multiple times, it's now counting up. And that's because we changed the trigger. So this is not the default trigger. This is a new trigger. The default trigger is simply submit. So to add it together, we can just put a comma there and now it's gonna trigger on both of these things. So when I call submit, it will save it as usual. So let's refresh in here. I'm gonna get rid of that log, preserve it again, and we'll save it. Now it's not triggering that again, but if I change the data, it saves it again as well. And we see it jump a little bit. And of course it's jumping because it's toggling between these two things very fast. This will be a little bit slower when we get into production because of the speed between a user's computer and the actual server is gonna have some lag time. So you'll see that quite a bit more often when you are in production. So that's pretty cool. So that's of course one way to do it. And I mean, this alone to me is like, oh, wow, this is worth using HTMX, just this, just even auto saving things from an auto submit. Now, of course, that's not the only thing we need to do. Every once in a while, you might want to save things based off of what they write on any given input. Now, to me, this is actually more practical on a search feature or maybe like verifying someone's username. So like my new username and then having it do some lookup in the background. And of course, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it in as this and show you how you might do it inside of a form element itself. So the first thing I wanna make sure is that I don't have this change trigger any longer because I'm gonna have the field actually trigger something itself. So just wanted to bring that back. And now what I wanna do is inside of my form, the recipe form itself, we want to update the attributes for the widget like this. Now this is yet another reason as to why I wanted to show you how to even add in placeholders and classes and all that. So we can actually do hx .po or dash post to the same URL as the form itself. Now the trigger, we'll talk about that in a second. We also wanna have a target of some kind. This should be an ID and I'm gonna use recipe form or let's do recipe container. This time just a little bit different of a target than we've seen. And then hx swap. This time I'll do inner HTML. So um, a little bit different than the outer HTML. And what this means is that I need to put a div out here and bring it down. And we're gonna go ahead and give it an ID. And I said recipe container, I believe. Right, yes. Okay, recipe container. So what's the trigger here? Well, whenever you're typing in a web browser, there's a method that's called, that's key up. Now you can actually see this on various JavaScript events. Key up is incredibly common. So what we want here is key up and changed. Now we can do it immediately, or we could also add in that delay of 500 milliseconds. I think that delay is actually critical with the key up. In other words, so if I am typing here, I don't want it to run every single time. I want it to wait for a few seconds and then run. That's kind of the idea. And so it also is gonna verify whether or not it's changed and then it's gonna actually run that key up, uh, which is cool. So let's take a look. So I do descriptions here, saved, right? Minutes, and if I just sit there for a minute, it actually saves as well. So even if I don't click away, it should save too. So I didn't click away at all and there it goes. So this is maybe a little bit more effective for any given field um, but realistically, if you're working in a form, something like this, especially with the save button there, 
there's a really good chance that you're not going to need it to auto trigger itself. The other bad part about this method is that it's going directly on the field itself. So if we look at the field, if we inspect the element on the field, what's going to happen is when I actually type something, the request itself is going to that field. And so what we see here is the form being re-rendered. Notice that it's being re-rendered in here. That's not great. Uh, so we might need to change how um, the actual you know, HX swap happens. But uh, what we see here though is the form's coming in and it's ever never showing the indicator because it's not going off of the form trigger anymore. It's going off of the individual field trigger, which is you know what this is. That's why HX post is right in there. Uh, which is, again, good and bad. So um, I want to go off of the field or the form itself in this case especially, and I'm going to leave that change in here as well um, with the delay of 500 milliseconds. So this is how I want to leave it. And then finally, this actually should have been outer HTML because we were doing two things. We were replacing this data. The only reason you would do inner HTML is if, if this div was actually elsewhere, like where the actual form um, was rendered was inside of something else, right? Uh, in other words, it wasn't in the actual same template itself that I'm trying to replace with. So anyway, so, so now back to this, we'll just say, leave it in as roast beefs. And then that way uh, it's closer to, you know, just generally speaking, what it is that we'd want from an auto save in our form.